Let me tell you the truth. It's West African. It's Spanish. It's Eastern European. It's Portuguese. It's Turkish. You're not Native American, unless you are. But then it's probably not Pocahontas. Think about when they settled Jamestown. That was 1607. We were here 40 years prior to the settlement in Jamestown. I think there are probably lots and lots and lots of people uh, who have connections to these communities who do not realize it yet. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thanks for being with me here on my channel where I've been asking the questions about who's American and hidden ancestry and how are we all connected because we really are. And I've been on a little kick uh, digging into Melungeon heritage, which I think that I have. And before I bring on some experts who I have lined up to talk with you and some folks who identify as Melungeon and are willing to share their stories, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I want to show you what I've been working on, which is basically trying to absorb as much as I can about Melungeon because it's really not something I'm familiar with. I remember hearing it before, like not, not in a family situation, but just I've heard the term before. And I thought it was kind of a pejorative term, like you don't say that. So it feels a little weird to say it. And I'm like, are we sure we can say that? Um, but I want to show you uh, a channel that I found and um, maybe I can get connected to some of these people. It'd be really cool to, to be able to talk to them live um, that talk about having Melungeon heritage. And I want to kind of just uh, watch it with you and see what you think. And we can react to it together. Um, and have a little conversation. And so this first guy, um, I'm going to switch over to screen view so I can share with you. Okay, so here we are. So this guy, his his name is the Appalachian Sun. Um, so I have a feeling this is going to be really good. And it's called It's Okay to Be Melungeon. So I want to watch this and see what he has to say. All right, I think it might have started while I was waiting. Let's start him over. Something you don't know about most Appalachian families is if you go to an Appalachian family get together, somebody there has new evidence about how the whole family is related to Pocahontas or another Native American. Uh, Appalach Appalachian, not Appalachian. Whoops. I, I, Appalachian is not a thing I've ever heard. Appalachian. Is that how you say it? Princess, like other native women weren't given birth but what i'm tired of are these are the same people who wouldn't take an ancestry dna test to find out the truth and let me tell you the truth it's west african it's spanish it's eastern european it's portuguese it's turkish you're not native american unless you are but then it's probably not pocahontas other women were given birth something you don't know about most appalachian families okay that's pretty hilarious um i like this guy's a straight shooter um, okay, so I learned Appalachian, not Appalachian. Um, okay, so let's go on to the next one. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, I, I think that there is Native American usually in this racial grouping, um, but other stuff too. Okay, so this one is from a much smaller channel um, called Ben Turner, if you want to check it out. And it is, it just says Melungeon intro. And the reason um, I didn't watch it yet, but it looks like old footage, which you know I'm a sucker for that. So I want to watch it. It's two minutes long. So let's see what it is all about. And then this area, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to be passing through. You gotta be coming here. But it's an area that's, uh, that's very unique to the state. And the reason I say that, uh, Hancock County, uh, as far as its culture is concerned and heritage, uh, I like to talk about the Melungeons because that's one one thing that the the people in this uh, country needs to know more about. Uh, this whole ridge was made up of uh, Melungeon families throughout throughout this whole Newman's Ridge for miles and miles and miles. And the uniqueness of the Melungeon people is that these people came into this country not into not into Hancock County but into this country. In, in Santa Elena, South Carolina in 1567. Now, what makes that so unique? Well, if we think about when they settled Jamestown, that was 1607. We were here 40 years prior to the settlement in Jamestown. But uh, they, uh, the explorers found that. Okay, so that's, that's incredible because I feel like there's these touchstones in American history, in the American story. Of, and this is when we got here. It's like this timeline, right? This is when we got here, and then we did this, and we did this. And the idea that the timeline starts even further 
and that I know, um, I'm not talking about the indigenous people who were already here. I really am talking about when people are saying they, they, they discovered it, uh, and they found it, um, who got here first. Uh, well, we know they didn't get here first, but Jamestown is, is kind of like the beginning, the beginning rumbles of that story. And here he's saying, well, there was actually, there were people here four decades before that. Uh, and it's really not something that is, I don't think, talked about a lot. It's definitely not, not in most history books. These people here on Nemes Ridge and what they expected to find when they came here was um, Indians. They didn't expect to find someone wearing clothes and someone with long beards and so on. And they found these people here that appear to be of uh, Moorish uh, descent because they, had, they had the appearance. And, um, and occasionally were asked, who are you people? By the explorers that were coming through. And, and they said that they were Portuguese. Many people uh, with the Melungeon heritage. Okay, Portuguese. So he's saying they would say they were Portuguese. And I saw that on some documents too, where that was written, Portuguese was written. Um, that's so interesting if that's how they were identifying at the time. Heritage uh, always felt like that it was uh, a put down to, uh, to be related or have Melungeon heritage. But uh, today that's not true. Uh, the impact that, uh, that uh, so many people today all across this country, and they're scattered out all over the country anymore. I mean, there's hundreds, thousands and thousands of people who has Melungeon heritage. I'm so bummed that that was such a short clip, um, but it was really amazing. And I love being able to see the area. I think that is always uh, really incredible when you can get a feel for the hills that people live their lives on and the views that they had. Um, I'm realizing that this is a deeper rabbit hole than I first thought it was. Um, and I feel like this is history, like he was saying, everybody needs to know this history. Um, and, and let me just speak as an American right now. If you are an American, you need to know this history because this has to do with the founding of a, of a new nation here. Uh, who was here? What was happening? And again, um, yes, there were thousands of indigenous groups here. Um, but what about people who were kind of showing up on the shores in the 16th century? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm absolutely just floored by this history and how little I know about it. So I think that might be something worth looking into. And so this Portuguese side of it is really interesting to me. Um, I would love to know if you have Melungeon ancestry, did you see Portuguese show up at all? Um, I had Portuguese show up, but I kind of just assumed it was really supposed to be Spanish and there was just kind of some confusion there, but maybe it really is separate and it really was, it really was Portuguese. I feel so alive when I realize there's so much to research. Um, I hate the idea of like, well, we reached the bottom of whatever this is, it's over now. Uh, I feel like there are so many different ways to look. And I'm realizing that even though Melungeon is considered like a small group of people, um, Melungeon history is far reaching. And, and I think there are probably lots and lots and lots of people uh, who have connections to these communities who do not realize it yet, or they haven't really been able to put all these disparate pieces together, um, whether it was hidden or it was lost. And I think Creole is a lot like that, where people don't uh, know know the, the roots that they're coming from. Um, and again, that's why I always am just pushing so hard on this channel, but like ask your older relatives questions, sit down and talk with them, start saving the history. You may think you know your family's story and it may be something totally different <laughs> than even what you've been told and uh, something that needs to be saved because it benefits all of us when we can pool our, all of our stories together. And I feel like that's the real um, history that we need, not these textbooks with bolded words that tell you know a, a very myopic uh, history, but we need the stories of these families and, and sharing these stories and, and having um, a much more dynamic experience with history. This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. So I'm, I'm stoked about this. Um, will you send me some stuff to watch with you? If you haven't already, I would love to do that. And let's just keep digging in and uh, 
I'm, I'm here for the long haul. I hope you are too. We'll talk soon.